How's it going everybody? My name is O Tyler and today we're going to be checking out the FK2B Divine Edition from Zowie. This thing's been sat on my desk now for the past couple of weeks. I'm going to let you know how I feel about it and if it's the right mouse for you. Zowie has come back in 2019 with a few refreshes of their previous models, including the EC series and the S series with a matte coating, a special edition of the EC series with Tai Lu colours, and lastly to round out the year, we are getting a refresh of the extremely popular FK series of mice. Zowie were kind enough to provide me with a pre-release copy of their up-and-coming FK2B Divina. This thing has been sent to me straight off of the first batch of orders, so quality control will be a focus of mine in this video. There's a lot with this mouse that has changed, and an equal part which has remained the same. We're going to be taking a look at what Zowie has done to improve the model. We're going to be doing some direct comparisons between this and some of the other mice in its field, as well as the usual buying recommendations and finding out if this is the right mouse for you. Zowie has stuck to their classic FK shape, and it's nothing short of legendary. And despite being half a decade old, the shape has stood the test of time and remains one of the best shapes in the business. It has been tried and tested by the esports community and is still being used to this day by Siege players, Overwatch players, and CS players. The first thing that sticks out about this mouse is how flat the mouse sits. The small shape and tight grip width make this mouse an insane shape for fingertip and claw grip. The mouse widens towards the back and has a hump at the rear that slopes gradually into the mouse pad. The top of the mouse is relatively flat with comfort grooves in the top of the buttons and small ridges on the front sides to keep your fingers in place when lifting the mouse. The shape sits relatively low at the front buttons, meaning that your fingers sit very close to the mouse pad. This design trend is also present in some of the best ambidextrous mice in the business, including the SteelSeries Sensei and the Endgame XM1. The measurements on Zowie's website claim that the mouse is technically longer than the original FK, however whilst this is true, the overall shape remains identical. I'm going to touch on this later on in the video. The overall shape is considerably long for its size, and whilst I criticised the FK2 for this in a previous video of mine, you can be extremely precise with this mouse and make slight corrections very easily, and I feel like the overall length is the reasoning for this. Whilst this mouse is intended for fingertip and claw grip users, it is possible for you to use a palm grip whilst using this mouse, and it is my preferred method of using it, as this allows you to take advantage of the aforementioned length to make precise adjustments with your wrist. Now that we've talked about the shape, we can move on to the features of the mouse that have actually changed. The side buttons are the first noticeable change, as they have been upgraded to be a lot more clicky and tactile. Intentional or not, they also stick out a little more compared to the original FK buttons. You'll notice also that the right buttons have been removed, and whilst this is a kick in the teeth for lefties out there, the lack of side buttons allows for a better feel for right-handed users. This small change has paved the way for one of the most important changes on the mouse. As before, where the FK2 weighed 85 grams, the mouse weighs only 80 grams now, which, depending on who you ask, puts the mouse at the perfect weight. Zowie have also included their updated rubber cable, which is in grey. You might recognise this cable from some of the other Davina products that Zowie have been releasing. Whilst it's not a flexible shoelace or a paracord, if you get this thing bungeed up the right way then it won't be a problem for you. It's also a little thicker than most of the rubber cables out there, meaning that it won't kink and you should be able to get this thing fairly flat within a couple of days of use. Remember earlier I mentioned that the mouse is technically longer? That's because the cable has been slightly raised to stop it from dragging on the pad. You might remember this from the S2 mouse which I covered in my previous video. This little extender on the front of the mouse is the reasoning for the change in the dimensions on the website, however it doesn't affect the shape to any noticeable degree. Underneath the mouse we can find an updated 3360 sensor and an extra foot for the sensor itself. I have touched on this before, however I would only recommend upgrading if you have problems with spin out or tilt slam with the 3310 sensor, because as far as I can tell, they both perform flawlessly. We also have the usual DPI button which can be found on the bottom of the mouse. This has four steps which is 400, 800, 1600 and 3200. We also have the polling rate button which goes up in 125, 500 and 1000 Hz. And while these aren't exactly new features on Zowie mice, they help keep the mouse driverless so that you can simply plug it in and get to work. The big feet that are on Zowie mice are always a winner for me and it's good to see that Zowie is still using these. 
You can throw on a pair of hyperglides on these if you want to, however it's not a necessity. The glossy coating that comes on these Davina mice is an absolute fingerprint magnet. I struggle to keep my copy clean for my video clips, and whilst this coating will suit people in drier climates, the coating might affect your grip if you tend to get sweaty hands. My advice would be to wait until Zoe brings out the matte black version of this mouse, however if you can't wait that long, you can take off the coating using a little scouring tool. There's some videos online which I'll link in the video description. The scroll wheel has also been upgraded, the steps are way more defined, and there's a lot less wobble in all directions. It also sounds considerably louder as well, which is something Zowie has been criticised for in the past. I'm going to do a quick comparison between the old scroll wheel and the new one. Um, and whilst we're at it, we're also going to do a sound test as well. The build quality on the Zowie lineup remains stellar. You might be paying a premium for Zowie products, however you can certainly feel this quality when using the mouse. The shell on this thing is completely solid throughout. The buttons and the scroll wheel have a premium feel to them and have no noticeable wobble. The clicks on this mouse feel a little bit more solid compared to the previous FK2, which always felt a little bit more hollow in my opinion. Whilst the Huano switches that Zawa uses on this mouse are extremely good, they can never quite live up to something such as an Omron switch or the analog switches that could be found on the Endgame XM1. The weight of this mouse is balanced towards the centre, and I can't seem to find anything that moves around inside of the mouse when it's rattled around. Taking a look at the mouse in game, there's a reason why this thing is trusted by the pros. The shape leaves no compromise when it comes to facilitating your aim. The shape allows you to be consistent and precise when used in game, and there is no question as to why the shape has influenced other mice and has even been cloned in some scenarios. The small improvements on this mouse make for a more enjoyable experience compared to the old FK2. However, as you would expect, being the same shape as before, it doesn't perform that much differently to the older version. What I'm trying to say is that this mouse is more of a preference than an upgrade. It's still an FK2, Zowie haven't reinvented the wheel here. If you already have an FK series of mice and are considering an upgrade, you should only do this if you have issues with tilt slam on your sensor, issues with your cable slash drag, or if you can't stand your scroll wheel. If you're not struggling with any of these issues, then it's very hard for me to recommend this mouse to you. The reason for this is because Despite being only 5 grams lighter, it still performs very similarly to the old FK2. A 3360 sensor is very similar, if not identical, to, to a 3310. And lastly, the coating of paint may not be to your preference. With that being said, the older FK models, such as the original black and special editions in white, are still excellent choices. What I like here is the fact that Zowie hasn't forgotten about the FK series, as I think some of us were worried that the S series was going to be a replacement for the shape. In addition to this, the release of the Model O and the O- have left FK fans holding out for a re-release. The sensor upgrade and the raised cable make for some nice improvements too. It's nice to see Zowie focusing on the smaller details that really matter. The only real improvement on this mouse can be found in the left and right clicks. They're great switches, but as I mentioned previously, they aren't the best out there. It's subjective, but the glossy coating doesn't do it for me personally. However, as I mentioned previously, you may want to hold out for the matte version of this mouse. All of these things aside though, it's still an excellent mouse and would be fine for high-end competitive play. So lastly, I want to talk about who I would want to recommend this mouse to. As always with Zowie Mice, you are going to be losing features such as RGB and dedicated drivers. However, it is no surprise that this mouse doesn't come with these features as it is intended to be plug and play. With that being said, I would recommend this mouse to people that are familiar with the Steel Series Sensei shape, the Rival 110, people looking to upgrade from their old FK series, or if you're finding the Model O to be a little too light. And hey, if your mouse is in ergonomic shape, then it's always worth taking a look. I personally switched back from an ergonomic mice around three years ago to ambidextrous, and I haven't looked back since. 
I've already begun writing up reviews for the Endgame XM1, the new Steel Series Sensei, and the Glorious Model O. Please let me know in the comments which one you'd like to see first. I can't always guarantee a release schedule as these videos are made in my free time and I always try and give as much time as I can to each video so that it's as good as it can be. Your feedback is always appreciated and taken into consideration, and if you want something sooner then ask for it. I'm always happy to listen to my audience. That's going to wrap up today's video, I hope that you've enjoyed it. Please consider liking and subscribing to my content, as it always goes a long way on such a small channel as mine. I hope to see you again soon in one of my upcoming videos, but until then, thank you very much for watching, take care.